Welcome to day five of the wait is over. Today is the H in wait. So today we are going to be talking about heart's desire. Um, so hold on one sec. There we go. Okay, good. So heart's desire, that is really going to be about goal setting and what's your motivating factor so oh why is this yeah I am sharing okay I don't know it said it was in the group and then it said to share it to the group so I've shared it anyway hopefully uh, some of you ladies come on if you are live say hello and if you're catching the replay then just let me know replay in the comments so today, the, our heart's desire, what is your goal and your motivating factor? Psalm 20 verse 4 says, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. So what is the desire of your heart? What, what is it that you want to do? Do you, do you have any idea? Um, when I started out on my weight loss journey, my heart's desire was to get healthy because I had ended up in the hospital in the ICU because of my health issues, my weight problems. I was having trouble breathing. I was put on BiPAP. I was in the ICU for eight days. So my heart's desire was to get healthy. But then I had a grandson that was being born that year. Um, and then once he came, then my heart's desire started to be, oh, I want to be able to play with my grandson. Then the following year, I had another one born. The following year, I had a granddaughter born. And now in the last seven months, I've had three more born. So now my heart's desire is to play with my grandkids and to be um, to be healthy for them, to be able to move around. And uh, sorry, somebody's commenting here. I just want to make sure that everything. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> you, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. All right. Um, so what was I saying? My grandkids. That's a huge part of it for me. But now as I've lost so much weight, I, I still have a lot to lose over a hundred pounds, but now I'm able to play with my grandkids. So now I've had to shift what my motivation is. It's not just about the grandkids because I met that goal. But the thing that I love is that God gives you the desire of your heart and he makes your plan succeed. However, Psalm 37 verse four to five says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. So, yes, he will give you the desires of your heart, but you have to take delight in him, and you have to commit your way to the Lord and trust him. So, you need to commit your weight loss plan to God and ask him to show you what what your desires should be. Hey, Sandra. Hebrews 12 verse one says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So the first part, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Gosh, I hate that. There is weight that slows me down. That's part of my problem. That's part of why I want to lose weight is because that this extra weight is slowing me down. Um, if one of the kids is getting into something or they're taken off down the hallway to be mischievous, it, it slows me down. This weight does. I can't chase after them. And I want to be able to chase after them. I want to be able to run around the park and, and on the playground and, and to be able to play tag. And there's some things that I still can't do. 
So what is slowing you down? What is weighing you down? Let me know in the comments. What is slowing you down or weighing you down? Um, and then it says to strip off the sin that so easily trips us up. Now, I, I struggle with that, okay? I think there's a better word for it because there's, there's um, like, eat, we, we kind of get tripped up on that word. We think that if we eat junk food, that it's a sin. And that's not it. The sin is the extreme part of it, all right? Um, what is that word when somebody is really obese and they eat a lot? I can't think of the word. Oh gosh, if you know what I mean, tell me in the comments. I can't think of the word. Um, but someone who goes to the extreme eating, binging and binging and binging, and that becomes the sin when we take things to the extreme. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Hi, Cindy. I want to be able to run. I want to be able, I mean, okay. I want to be able to run, but I've never been a runner. Like even when I was a size three, I still wasn't a runner, but I want to be, I, I mean, I could run, but right now I can't run. So I want to be able to run again. And I want to be able to endure through the race that God has set before me, whatever it is that he has for me, I want to be able to show up and do it. Um, and it's funny, well, it's not funny because I planned it, but the, the, one of the group programs that I'm running right now is called Endure. And, and that's the reason why, because we want to be able to endure through everything and endure that race that God set before us. Um, so what is slowing you down? Now, for some people, some of the, here's some of the things that could slow us down. Oh, uh, Oh, good. Okay, Cindy. Well, thank you. Yeah, I hope the, the replays. So Cindy was saying Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday got wild for her. The replays will be in the group, and I'm going to move them all over into a guide that says the wait is over, so you guys will be able to catch those, and uh, I'll just, I'll leave them in there. So what is slowing you down, or what is weighing you down? For some people, it's emotional things that are weighing them down, like trauma. If you've had an abusive past, that abusive past can actually weigh you down and trip you up and keep you stuck. I had an abusive past. And then you start putting the weight on to protect yourself from predators. The, and, the sad, and the sad thing is, it's not really protecting us. I mean, I thought it was protecting me, but it wasn't. Because even at 330 pounds, I still came across men who were inappropriate. So I've had to learn how to be strong and how to stand up for myself and to carry myself better so that I don't look as vulnerable to predators. I mean, predators are predators. There, there's always that, that potential, right? And so the trauma can keep us stuck and it can keep that weight on us. The great thing is, is that God can give you the strength that you need. Um, we just need to ask. And I know, I know, I know trauma is a hard one to deal with. Because even now, as I say that, ask God to help you. Oh, it's all rosy. Except that I was abused. So, you know where was God? He was there with me. And at 11 years old, somehow I knew that. And the verse that says, Romans 8 and 28, that says, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. At 11 years old, I read that verse and I said, all right, God, I don't know why you're allowing this trauma to happen in my life, but I'm going to trust you because this is what your word says. And I'm going to trust you to make something good out of it. 11 years old. It still blows my mind that, that God had put that on me. So there have been a lot of good things that have come out of the trauma in my life. One of them being 
I'm able to coach my clients and understand where they're coming from because I've come from similar trauma. So we'll, we'll just let that go. That's uh, that, that fear of losing weight and fear of being vulnerable is something that we work on in, in my programs. So um, if that's something that's, that's been a struggle for you, please reach out to me and, and I can talk to you about whichever program would be a good fit for you. The other thing that could slow us down is fear. So whether that's a fear of success or a fear of failure. So let me know in the comments, are you afraid of succeeding or are you afraid of failing? Again, uh, for me, I think I was afraid of succeeding because I was afraid, afraid of getting back to that, that state where I felt vulnerable and where I was getting people's attention. But here's the thing. I was afraid of people noticing me, but at 330 pounds, people noticed me <laughs> like I wasn't hiding. So, you know, like our, our mind can play tricks on us for sure. Um, and then the, the fear of failure where maybe you've tried over and over and over again to lose weight. And to you, it feels like you're just never going to get there because you continually go off the wagon and gain the weight back again. So maybe there's a fear of failure. Maybe pain is an issue, um, whether it's emotional pain or physical pain, overwhelm, anxiousness, whatever the thing is that slows you down or weighs you down, we need to start working on that and changing your, your views on it. Um, a friend of mine is also a life coach and she teaches that your thoughts and your beliefs drive your actions and your actions drive your results. The thing is, when you, when you think something, it's just a thought but it doesn't necessarily have to be your belief. You can even feel overwhelmed, but you don't have to be overwhelmed. You don't have to believe that you're overwhelmed. It's like those people that whenever you ask them how they are, they it's a perpetual, oh, well, and they start telling you all the things that are wrong. And it's because they're dwelling on that stuff. And it's not that we just ignore things and say, oh, well, it's not, it's not bothering me. Like we're not being flaky like that either. It's just knowing that God is looking after us and we can't, maybe we can't change the circumstances. If it's, if it's a stressful situation, maybe right now we can't change it, but we can change our thoughts about the situation. We don't have to fall prey to those negative beliefs. Philippians 3.13 says, focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So the Bible tells us that we're able to let go of the past and look forward to what's ahead. It, it's not a forget the past if, if you're able to. Like, no, it says to focus on forgetting the past and to focus on looking forward to what lies ahead. That is where the heart's desire comes in. When you your you know what your heart's desire is, when you know what your goal and your motivating factor is, that's going to be the thing that keeps you focused on your goal. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? <laughs> so I'm telling you to follow your heart's desire. And then I read you a verse that says, your heart is deceitful above all things. But it, it's true. Your heart can lead you astray. And that's why it's really important to be in God's word, to be communing with him, having conversation with him, asking him to show you what he wants for you, to show him, to asking him to show you what his desire is for you then you're not going to be deceived by your heart. Um, okay, Shirley, hopefully you'll be able to watch the, the replay on this. 
Psalm 16 verse 2 says, you are my Lord. Every good thing I have comes from you. Every good thing I have comes from you. So those bad things don't come from God, right? And we know that. The good things come from God. So what good things do you want in your life? He is your Lord. He wants to, he wants to help you and he wants to give you your heart's desire. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. So God makes known to us the path of life. He's going to let us know the direction that he wants to go. And the closer we get to God, the more our heart's desire is going to be God's desire. And when those two become the same thing, that is a beautiful thing. Then there's going to be fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. So sometimes we're afraid to lean on God. We're afraid to let him direct our paths because we don't know what it's going to look like. Like we have in our mind an idea of the way we want things to go. And so we want to help God out. And then we end up making poor choices. But at your right hand are pleasures evermore. God's not going to lead you a certain way and then pull the rug out from under you. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you pleasures evermore. So trust God and trust the direction that he's leading you. All right, so um, there's a quote that says, do something today that your future self will thank you for. So as we're talking about setting goals for ourselves and knowing what our heart's desire is, what is something that you could do today that the you a year from now would thank you for? And one of the things I get my clients to do, um, I think it's in the Captivate program. I get them to write themselves a letter from their future self. So let's write a letter. This is you a year from now writing a letter to you today as though the future you has reached your goal. So what is the future you going to tell the present you? What are the things that you would want you to know once you've reached your goal? Like what advice are you going to give yourself? Our actions and decisions today will shape the way we will be living in the future. We put off weight loss. We procrastinate. We wait until everything's going to be perfect. We wait until all the junk food is out of the house. Well, let me just get rid of the junk food. And by get rid of the junk food, that's code for let me go eat all the food this week and then I'll join a program next week. I'll start my plan next week. But I did that for 30 years. <laughs> and gained over 200 pounds. You don't want to do that, do you? Our actions and decisions today shape the way we'll be living in the future. So if you don't make goals, you're just going to continue through life without direction. There is a verse, and I forgot to write it down, um, without a vision, people perish. And it's true. If we don't have a vision and a goal, then there's, there's not a real reason for us to stick to the plan. It's so much easier to fall off track when we don't have a clear vision and goal of where we want to be. <clears throat> Think about getting in the car. So <laughs> you, you get in the car and you just drive. You have no destination. Well, what I mean, sure, if it's just a nice day and you want to go for a drive, but if you need to get somewhere, Let's say I need to go to work, but I don't know where work is. So I'm just going to get in the car and hope that I find work. I find my job. <laughs> we, we wouldn't do that. We have a destination. Maybe we need to use a GPS, something that's going to guide us to get to our destination. 
the same thing with weight loss. We need to have a destination where we want to be. Sometimes we know the direction to get there. We know the steps that we need to take. Other times, maybe we don't know the steps. Maybe we're a little bit confused and we're not sure of which turns to take. And so we need a GPS. And a GPS is a coach. Okay? <laughs> a GPS is a coach. A coach is going to help you, guide you in the direction that you need to go in the best direction you need to go to get to your destination. We could take many winding ways. We could take the back roads, but the best way is the most direct way. And that's what coaching helps you do. Now, when you're setting a goal, don't be unrealistic. I had a woman that, um, we were talking about working together and I said to her, what would your goal be over the next four months of us working together? And she said, I want to lose a hundred pounds. And I said, well, okay. I mean, in an extreme diet, yes, a hundred pounds is quite possible. It's not healthy and it's not realistic. It, it's very, very difficult to lose a hundred pounds without being extremely restricted. So I cautioned her against that goal and said, no, like we need to set a more real, realistic goal. Now for her, she was looking forward to getting some um, uh, knee surgery. And the doctor said she had to lose 100 pounds before she could have the surgery, which was scheduled for four months down the road. And I'm, I'm thinking, why would the doctor tell her to lose 100 pounds in four months? Well, come to find out, she'd had months and months and months of preparation. I think he had given her a year to prepare to lose this 100 pounds. And so now it was down to the wire. And now all of a sudden, she's got to lose this 100 pounds in order to have the surgery. And that's the problem also when you when you make your goals too easy. So if you said, I want to lose four pounds in four months. Well, you know what? Your chances of losing four pounds in four months are almost the same as losing a hundred pounds in four months, because what's going to happen is you're going to keep saying, oh, I got a little long. I got a little longer. I've got a little longer. And you're going to procrastinate and say, well, this won't matter because I only have to lose four weight four pounds. So I, I've still got time. And next thing you know, it's like the rabbit and the hare or the, the rabbit, the tortoise and the hare, right? Next thing you know, there's the finish line and you're like, crap, <laughs> I've done nothing. So also when you're setting weight loss goals or setting goals, it's not just the weight loss goals. Okay. Now, when you're setting a weight loss goal, you want to be specific and and try and say, I want to lose X number of pounds. So I had a client who worked with me for three months and her goal was 25 pounds in that three months. She lost like, I think it was 24.2. She was 0.8 pounds away from that 25 pounds, which was amazing. She did really, really well, but she stuck to the program. And what she said for her was the mindset has changed everything for her. So when all of those temptations were there, because we had worked on the mindset, she knew what she was going to do. And, and that temptation wasn't the same because we had worked on changing the way she was thinking about the food. So um, X number of pounds, Maybe one of your goals is to increase your energy. Maybe you want to get into a particular outfit. Maybe you want to wear clothes that you like rather than the clothes that fit. This dress that I'm wearing today is one of my favorites. I love, like, you, you can't see it, but it, it swooshes. Oh, see, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm very, yeah, anyway, I'm too close to the camera. But it, it swooshes in up here, like there's a little tie here. And, and then it drops just under my breast. And then it's a long dress and it hangs so nicely. I wouldn't have been able to wear that at 330 pounds because it didn't come in my size. Hey, Blanca. Um, so 
one of one of my goals was to be able to wear cuter clothes. And I'm not on my goal, but the clothes that are available in my size now, which is typically, I think, around the one X, they fit nicer um, and and they just look better, right? So um, maybe one of your goals is to fit into clothes that you like rather than the ones that just fit. Maybe you want to feel sexy. I had a client who said that was one of her goals. She wanted to be able to feel sexy again. Maybe you just want to feel confident in your body so that you're not self-conscious that people are looking at you. But you need to be specific and you need to write those goals down. Put them someplace where you, you'll be reminded of them on a regular basis. So that's something that I do with my clients and we call them anchors. So I get them to have reminders using all five senses. Um, so obviously visual would be post-it notes or have it, have it written down in your journal or um, I don't know. The notes work great. When I was working with a, a coach, I had post-its all over my kitchen and, and that helped. But here's the thing. If eventually I got tunnel vision. So even though I had these post-its all over the kitchen, I got to the point where I didn't see them anymore. You put something on your fridge as a reminder, and then eventually it just becomes part of the decor and you don't notice it anymore, which is why I have you do all five senses, because then it's like you're being overloaded with anchors and reminders of what your goal is. So um, one of my clients, her, her um, uh, anchor for touch was her two-year-old daughter. So when her daughter would come to her for a hug or she'd go to her daughter for a hug, that was her reminder. Like her daughter was her why. So that was a reminder for her. The smell, the taste, the hearing. The hearing could be music or it could be a podcast. It could be it could be the giggle of your child or your grandchild. So be creative and think of ways to overload your senses to remind you of what your goal is. And um, one of the ways to, and I do this with my clients as well, when you're trying to figure out what your goal is, you got to ask yourself a lot of questions. So my goal is to lose 110 pounds. Why? Why is that important to you? Like, keep asking yourself that because Losing 110 pounds is not a strong enough reason to lose the 110 pounds. I need a reason, okay, because I want to be more active. Well, why is it important for you to be more active? Because then I can go on walks and I can go to the park with my grandkids. Well, why is that important? Why is it important for you to be able to go to the park with your grandkids? Like, keep asking yourself, why is that important? It may take you five to seven times and it's, it's good to journal it, write it down and keep asking yourself that question until you really come to the reason why, the important reason why, your motivating factor. Um, and then do a visualization. Imagine yourself at your goal weight. We do this in the, um, in the Captivate program. So the way the programs work, Captivate is the first 90 days. And then the second 90 days is called Abide. And then the, yeah, and then the third round of 90 days is called Endure. Um, and the girls in the third round are almost done and almost ready to go to the fourth round. And I can't remember what the name is that I have for it. But, and then I have a membership. A monthly membership and we call that engage because um, we engage with one another and when you're and you you're more engaged in your weight loss kind of gone off topic but in the captivate program we do a visual visualization where you imagine yourself at your goal weight and what is it going to be like what are you going to be wearing 
What are you going to look like? What are you going to be saying? Who are you going to be with? What are you going to be doing? Like visualize that. Um, and then an, another thing that we do is a vision board. And I love when they do their vision board because it gives them, it gives them the, the potential to dream. And, and that's what we're doing, right? We, I want to know your heart's desire. And so when you start working on the vision board, maybe some of those things that you've been afraid to say out loud, now you sneak into the vision board. And I, I've loved seeing the things that the girls have come up with when they create your vision board. Um, and then I mentioned the letter to yourself. So the future you writing a letter to the present you. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it. So you're like, figure out your goal, but keep asking yourself why that's important so that you get your motivating factor. That reason needs to be like an, at least an eight out of 10. I prefer a 10 out of 10. When, when that reason to lose weight is a 10 out of 10 on the importance scale, that is going to motivate you. And when you have those anchors all over the place, you have your vision board, you visualized yourself at that, that goal, that's going to keep you motivated and keep you focused. Sure, you're going to have days where you fall off track, where you get frustrated and you kind of forget your vision because I did that. And you know what? Let me tell you, let me tell you some truth. I got to 246 last year and it felt amazing. And then COVID hit, oh my gosh. And so many things went on um, in our home. We had some issues. Um, it was just a very, very stressful time. I'll just leave it at that. And plus, at 246 pounds, I was now able to play with my grandkids. And, and, and I had the stamina to have them for an entire day. I have the stamina to have them for two days. So I had actually reached that goal, that motivating factor. And I didn't realize that until this year after I'd gained 20 pounds back. And I, I thought, what is going on with me? Why can't I get this weight off? What happened? And when the girls started their Endure program, we talked about their vision and their goals again. And then it was like a light dawned on me. And I thought, oh my gosh, okay, I met that goal. Now I need to, needed to set a new goal. And I hadn't done that. So without that goal, you're going to struggle. All right. What is your weight costing you? finances, relationships, your social life, your work, your everyday life. Write down how much it's costing you. My weight was costing me a ton of money, honestly. I was on $200 of medication every month. And because I was tired, exhausted, and in pain, we ate out a lot or we ordered in. And that was expensive. There was one month uh, a few years ago where we spent $680 on takeout. I was mortified when I sat down and actually figured out the number. So there was the takeout, the junk food, like that $680 didn't even include the junk food that was coming in the house. And then the medication on top of that. I very rarely order in or do takeout anymore. Most of the time I cook. If we do deliver or takeout, it's for an occasion. We, maybe a couple times a month. That's it. Um, so I eat it. I eat at home. That saved me so much money. Um, and I'm off of all my medication. I've been able to heal my body through nutrition. I saw my doctor in November and he was blown away at how well I'm doing. And then I had 
um, my hernia removed in January. And when I was going for the prep for that, they said, okay, so what medications are you on? Because I'm still a hundred pounds overweight. What medications are you on? I said, none. And they're like, none? <laughs> no. But you're diabetic. Yes. And it's controlled by, by uh, nutrition. So she took my blood pressure. They had done blood work and it had all come back well, good. And they checked my blood sugar and my blood sugar was good. And she was like, wow, what have you done? And I said, I've lost weight. And that was even after gaining the 20 pounds last year during COVID. And then the last thing I want you to do is to choose a word for yourself. My, and I get my clients, again, I get them to do that. And then I do up a little word art thing for them. So they, like one of them was unstoppable. That's, that's my other program. The, the group coaching is abide. The first round is captivated. The second round is unstoppable. The third round is endure. Um, anyway, so I get them to come up with a word for themselves. And then I do a word art where I find other words that are similar to that word. So one of the girls was unstoppable. Another was motivated. Another was determined. Um, my word was relentless. Somebody else's was fearless. So I want you to think of a word for yourself. And if you know it right now, put it in the comments. Otherwise, think about a word that will represent you and what you want for yourself. Mine is relentless because last year was such a difficult year. I want to be relentless in my pursuit of getting to my goal. I don't want things to trip me up and get me in and, and get in the way. All right. So my phone is saying that the video is not working. So hopefully it didn't cut out on you, but I'm done anyway. If you do have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I will answer them as best I can. If you want to talk further, I'm happy to get on a 15, 20 minute call with you and talk about where you are in your journey, what, you, what you're looking for, even to help you figure out what your goal is. That would be a free call. Obviously, if we get on a call, I am going to talk to you about the program, but it's not going, I, I'm, I'm never pushy because I understand there's no sense in pushing somebody into doing a program if they're not ready. I've done it. I've signed up for programs and I wasn't ready and I didn't follow through. And when I first was coaching, the same thing happened. I signed on a client and in the back of my mind, I knew she wasn't quite ready, but I signed her on anyway. And she wasn't ready. And so she wasn't showing up. So if you get on a call with me, I'm not going to push you. I will let you know the ways that you can work with me, but I will never push you to do anything that you're not ready to do. I would love, however, to be able to have a chat with you, see where you at, where you're at, and to be able to help you figure out what your motivating factor is. That being said, the program that I am offering right now is my group or is my um, monthly membership. It's only $47 a month. And what you get with that is someone to hold you accountable. I, you know, like I said, I'm your GPS. So I'm going to guide you and help you stay on path and to take the right path to follow the right direction. Um, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Not over the phone, but you get to text me, you get to send me a message in Messenger, in our private group. Um, you can use Voxer, you can use Marco Polo, you can use email, whatever works for you. You have access to me seven days a week during as long as you're in the membership. So if you're struggling with something, you reach out and you let me know. If you just want to tell me how great your day has gone, I love getting those messages. Um, recently I had a client who had been struggling and falling off track a bit. Like I, I, we were working closely together because she uses Voxer. So she had that audio support every day, but she said, I'm really struggling. So we, 
for two weeks, she started sending me everything that she ate. And she would just snap a picture and send me and send it to me so that I knew what she was eating. And that worked really great. And then at the end of the two weeks, she says, all right, I feel like I've got it back together. I'm back on track. Um, I, I'm good now. I don't need to keep sending the pictures. So, but she had that one-on-one -on -one support. So that's what the membership does. It gives you that one-on-one -on -one support. Plus twice a week, I will drop a video a teaching video, you'll get an affirmation and a motivation at first of the day, you'll get some journal prompts so that you've got something to work on throughout the week until the next lesson drops. Oh gosh, I hope that this has not died on me. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would love to chat with you. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the total transformation. Bye.